Less than a week until the ACC softball tournament and tonight we've got number nine Florida State certainly one of the favorites to bring home the conference crown taking on the Pitt Panthers who look to solidify their spot in the bracket and we take a look at the standings top 10 teams will make the conference tournament Florida State all the way up at number two and the Panthers looking to hold off North Carolina and Boston College to keep that 10 spot. Welcome you inside the booth here at Varda Beatty and Field. Jason Earl and alongside me, Matt Ionazzo. Full and exciting slate of games this weekend in the ACC as teams finalize seating. Absolutely, Jason. It's great to be here with you today. This series is certainly huge for both Florida State and Pitt. Pitt on the cusp of the ACC tournament, that's for sure. Florida State vying for their 18th regular season title. And for Florida State, not a team that could only win the ACC, but potentially a national championship contender as well, and in large part due to their pitching that has been elite all season long. Yeah, Jason, this Florida State pitching staff is headlined by this three-headed monster. That is Katherine Sandercock, Kaylin Arnold, and Danielle Watson. They've led their team to an ERA of 1.62. That's going to give you a chance to win every single day. 10 shutouts in the last 23 games from this Florida State pitching staff. But for the Panthers, this is a team not long ago was 5-20 in the ACC on the outside looking in for the tournament, but now as of late really turning it on and making that last season push. As every team likes to do, ending the season at their best. This hot streak has brought Pitt into their ACC tournament contention here, and they really received more consistency from the circle. But as you can see there, nearly doubling their runs per game have led to the streak. Panthers are winners of six of the last eight and a huge series here as they look to get into the ACC tourney and Brittany Knight will start off in the circle in game one. Yeah, Brittany Knight, the senior from Ohio, has been there. She's done that. This is a great spot for her to continue her hot pitching of late. You're going to see from her today a little bit of pitching backwards, some change-ups in some hitters counts, some fastballs early. But what we're really looking for is this short leash. If she doesn't pitch so hot at the very beginning, I wouldn't expect, I mean, I would expect maybe to see Abby Edwards sooner rather than later. So she'll start off with ball one to Elizabeth Mason, who's leading off for the Seminoles. And one off the outside as we take a look at the starting lineup for the Seminoles. Elizabeth Mason, as I mentioned, leading off. And how about Sydney Sherrill? 61 doubles in her career at Florida State, the most in ACC history. She'll be up next. Yes, Sydney Sterrell's certainly one of the better hitters in the ACC, and she's going to look to keep her team in ACC championship contention today. Mason, the leadoff spot, and Sherrill, as you mentioned, coming up next, both experienced seminal players as Mason swings for strike two. Brittany Knight battling back from what was initially a 2-0 count. Yeah, as we said, right, pitching a little bit backwards, getting behind. But you know what? When you have off-speed stuff the way that she does, not surprised she gets back into the count quickly. And gets Mason for the strikeout to start the day. And Elizabeth Mason goes down looking. So Brittany Knight and the Panthers off to a good start as we take a look at the rest of the defense for Pittsburgh. Yeah, we really need to focus on that up the middle, right with Levesque, Bates, Soul, and Barbie behind the plate. Those are going to be their anchors to make sure uh, that anything that gets out there, they make the plays. You see Hannah Beach in right field, not the usual starter for the Panthers, but E.C. Taylor out today after suffering an injury in the Panthers' final game of the series against Boston College. So Beach stepping in at right field for the Panthers. Yeah, Jason, E.C. Taylor, that's going to be a big loss for the Panthers. There's no doubt about that. One of the better players, not only at Pitt, but in the ACC in, in general. She, she's stolen so many bags this year. She's a threat everywhere she goes. It's going to be interesting to see if Pitt can make up for that, ac um, that absence in different ways. So brings up Sidney Sherrill after the leadoff strikeout of Elizabeth Mason. 2-0 pitch here. And that's good for strike one. And yeah, it looked like a little bit of a backdoor curve there. Uh, again, behind in the count, 2-0, comes right back and gets the strike. It, you know, as you're watching Brittany here sometimes today, you think, oh, maybe she's getting into a 2-0 count on purpose because then she can get to her nasty off-speed stuff. Um, I, I, I guarantee you that that's not the case, but she's really good when she's behind in the count. That is a slippery slope, but I can tell you she is really good. 
And Knight finds herself behind in the count now at 3-1. And here comes the pitch with one out. Off speed again, but Cheryl goes deep to center field. And Sydney Cheryl starts off the scoring for Florida State with a drive to deep center. And the Florida State Seminoles take the lead 1-0 to start. Yeah, here early, right, as I said, that slippery slope of getting behind in the count, that 3-1 count, she misses with the pitch a little bit too much over the middle, and it looks like Cheryl made her pay with a beautiful swing. First home run of the season for Sydney Cheryl, who has had a tremendous Florida State career, consisting of many home runs, but none this season until just now, and a huge way to start off the series for Florida State. Yeah, if you're Florida State, you're excited, right? You know, you're, you're, you're right there. You're, you're right there winning the ACC uh, regular season championship. But if you're Pitt, right, solo home runs aren't going to beat you. Right? You have to expect that you're going to score at least one run offensively. So, you know, that solo home run, can't, you can't allow that to deflate you in any way, shape, or form. So it brings up for the Seminoles, Kaylee Harding, freshman who has really impressed this season for Florida State. Leads the team in batting average, RBIs, hits, and triples coming into the weekend. Yeah, talk about the athlete that Kaylee Harding is. She was actually recruited as a catcher, but starting today out in right field, showing that versatility for the Seminoles. So pitch there outside, making it 3-0. Panther catcher Walker Barbie going to have a conversation with Brittany Knight. And you see there Lonnie Alameda with a tremendous resume in her time as the Florida State head coach. 13th season there. And as you see, seven straight NCAA Super Regional appearances. Won the national title back in 2018. And once again, a Florida State team that could very well bring home another national crown this season. She's a five-time ACC Coach of the Year. And Matt, maybe the most impressive, six consecutive ACC tournament titles. Yeah, that's not bad. I, I tell you, that, that's uh, <laughs> what you'll sign up for if you're an athletic director. Now, all joking aside, Coach Alameda is one of the best college softball coaches in the country. There isn't a doubt about that. She gets the best out of her out of her players. She gets the best out of her staff. And she has led this championship culture at Florida State softball uh, to places where, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be in it year in and year out just based on that culture. So can't say enough great things that she's done at Florida State. And has yet to miss an NCAA tournament since joining Florida State as the head coach, one of just nine schools to play in every NCAA tournament since the year 2000. Kaylee Harding here with a full count, one out, nobody on, top of the first. And as you said, Matt, Harding recruited as a catcher, and Alameda said, well, we knew she could swing it a little bit, but has really brought out the bat this year. Again, leading the team in batting average, but this time pops one up to second base. Lolo Sanchez makes the easy catch there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to and see for if the if Panthers, that Jody that. Hermanic Go here, ahead. Matt, four NCAA tournament appearances in her time at Ohio in her third season as the Panther head coach trying to get back to the ACC tournament. But you were saying. No, I was, I was saying that, hey, you know, I want, I'm curious if that at bat, coming back from a 3-0 count after the home run, propels Brittany Knight into a, a good rhythm and groove. Uh, but to, to your point about Coach Hermanic and what she's done with this pit program, it's been absolutely fantastic. You know, a mark of good coaching is when your back's against the wall, what happens with your team? Does your team fold? And two weeks ago, three weeks ago, this Pitt team had every chance in the world to fold, right? They played uh, North Carolina and Boston College, and if they had lost more than they won, they'd be square out of the, the ACC tournament co uh, conversation. But they've won six of their last eight, and they're back in it. That's right, and we showed you the ACC standings before we started this one off, and those two teams you just mentioned, North Carolina in Boston College. When the Panthers went into that series against the Tar Heels, UNC was fairly firmly established in that top 10 to make the ACC tournament. But as you see there, Panthers winners of six of their last eight, including a four-game sweep over North Carolina 
and has propelled them into a solid position here to reach that ACC tournament. Once again, currently sitting in 10th, but to start the season, they won in 11 and found themselves in last in the ACC. But you see the turnaround there that has given them a shot to make that bracket. Yeah, when you talk to Coach Romanek, she's nothing but positive, nothing but uh, an opportunistic with, with what can happen down the stretch here. She thinks if, she, if her team gets in, into the tournament, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, and, and they have every intention of doing so here. And, and I think it'll take maybe a win, maybe some help uh, this weekend, but they're absolutely in contention to do that. So a we'll walk there for Cassidy Davis will keep the inning alive for Florida State. And again, Matt, going back to North Carolina in Boston College, those are the two teams currently sitting right behind Pitt in the standings. And, and one thing Jody Hermanick said to us is game one in this series is so important because last weekend, or two weeks ago, actually it was, Panthers had last weekend off, but took on Boston College, won the first two games in that series, but then dropped the second two. And Jody Hermanick said, you know, if they win maybe even one of those, it, it could be huge in terms of their placement and getting that 10 seed, clinching a spot in the tournament. But because they lost those last two to Boston College, more work to do this weekend. They're going to need help from other places in the conference. So she wants to just get game one, win this one, and potentially earn that spot in the tournament. So just one run to start in the first inning for Florida State. Thanks to the solo shot from Sydney Sherrill, good for her first dinger of the season. Welcome back to Varda Beattie and Field as we get set for the bottom of the first. And Catherine Sandercock taking the circle for Florida State, the sophomore who has had a tremendous year for the Seminoles. Yeah, she certainly has. Just really, really nasty stuff. She's going to be at her best when she's down in the zone. Really good drop ball, a lot of ground balls keeping her team involved. Uh, and, and she's recently really been working on honing those corners, kind of nibbling from time to time. When you're really good in the zone, you can afford to take chances and be perfect. And as you see there with that, that win-loss record and that ERA, clearly it's worked out for her. Yeah, Sander Cock has had a tremendous season for Florida State and just a sophomore from Virginia. Leading the team in ERA, just a 1.04 ERA on the season, which is also good for second in the conference. So a tall task ahead for the Panthers today, taking on one of the best pitchers in the ACC. And leading it off for the Panthers is Chandler Walter. will be followed by Kayla Lane and Cammie Compson. And you see Sarah Siemens with 12 home runs on the season, having a breakout year for the Panthers, third in the conference with those 12 homers. Grounder to short, routine play. Throw over to Mason. Good for out number one. And Devin Flaherty there at second base for the Seminoles. As we bring up Kayla Lane for the Panthers. Lane, the sophomore from Georgia, has a hit in six of her last seven games. That time, we ground it to short once again. So quickly to start the Panthers batting this afternoon. Two outs made by Josie Muffley over at short. As advertised, right? And for the first two hitters, we expected the drop ball. We expected ground balls keeping her, her teammates involved. And boom, boom, ground balls to shortstop. And Panthers looking two outs, nobody on already here in the first. And once again, Sandercock with just her fourth pitch of the inning, making quick work of the Panthers in the bottom of the first. one nothing lead for the Knolls. one nothing lead for Florida State as we head to the top of the second. And look what the Seminoles have done in their last six ACC series. A 22-1 record, four sweeps. And how about the difference between the runs Florida State has scored compared to the opponents? 124 to 28, an absolutely dominant Seminole team. And now we get the breakdown of each of those series 
And again, just absolute dominance from this Florida State club, taking down everybody in their path here late in the season. Yeah, we're not talking about, you know, maybe some lower end Division One teams into maybe some other divisions. We're talking about ACC softball. As you saw, there are a couple of top 25 teams that they made quick work of. Uh, you know, this program is absolutely dominating through the ACC and, you know, it, can't say enough about about their head coach as year in year out new girls in the lineup still the same success and that's the sign of a successful program is when it continues when you lose personnel you bring some more in and that's exactly what florida state has done as it brings up anna shellnut here to start the second inning And it talks actually about expectations too. And when you go to Florida State to play softball, you're expected to, to rival for a national championship. You're expected to go to a super year in and year out. That is the standard. And that's what all other programs in the ACC are fighting to become. Fortunately for Florida State, that's what they are year in, year out. So they bring in the players that can do that. You know, that's what they preach. And that's the success that they've clearly had. Anna Shellnut. At bat here was a part of that team in 2018 that won the ACC championship game. Shell not this season with five homers on the year. Struggled in their series last weekend against NC State. Went 0 for 12 against the Wolfpack, but looking to bounce back this weekend against the Panthers, of course, would be the perfect time to get the back going right before the ACC tournament. Deep fly ball to left center, and Levesque is over to make the catch. Yeah, big lead off out, right? So, so, you, so if you're Brittany Knight, you give up the run in the first, your team comes back and scores zero. You kind of get shut down a little bit um, in very quick order, and you come out and get that lead off out. That's absolutely huge to stop any sort of momentum that Florida State uh, uh, had been accumulating over that past inning. So uh, a big out for her. I'd love for her to continue to get ahead of hitters. Although she is good behind in the count, I'd love to see those pitches ahead in the count to force soft contact like you saw right there. And Matt, that's one of the things that head coach of the Panthers, Jody Hermanic, is keying in on with this Panther team is securing those leadoff outs, keeping runners off the base paths early on in innings. And they get the lead off out there. And it brings up Devin Flaherty. Yeah, their, their program goal defensively in the circle is to get five out of seven leadoff outs in the game. Obviously, seven innings in the game, getting five of those leadoff outs. That's one of the determining factors that Coach Romanic thinks that if they're able to achieve, they'll have more success than not. So 2-1 now to Flaherty. And so far, the Panthers are two for two in getting those leadoff outs here today. First inning, Elizabeth Mason led off. And she struck out looking. Of course, Sydney Sherrill followed that up with a solo shot to center. And now here in the second, 2-2 two -two pitch coming for Devin Flaherty with one out. Low and in, got her swinging. Second strikeout of the day for Brittany Knight. Yeah, very good. Looked like a, a backdoor curveball or drop ball there from Brittany Knight. Again, getting into a leverage count and throwing one of the pitches that she is so good with. Right over top for Flaherty and two outs, nobody on for Pitt. So that'll bring up Josie Muffley. Again, Matt, aside from that solo shot from Sydney Sherrill, Brittany Knight has been successful so far today. That's the only hit throughout these first two innings. Yeah, and that's why I said after the home run, you know, solo home runs really don't hurt you. You know, it, it's, it's the multi-home runs, or multi-run home runs, I'm sorry, that really get you. It's, it's the, the walk and the guys, on, or I'm sorry, the ladies on base more often. That's what drives that pitch count up and causes maybe some of those bigger innings to happen later in the game. Solo home runs, that, that shouldn't be something that, that knocks you off your game at all. Outside pitch there, fouled opposite field down the right field line. Makes it 1-2. So 
Two outs here in the top of the second. Brittany Knight looking to end the inning here against Josie Muffley. Pitches outside. Muffley makes contact back to Knight. Throw over to first. And that'll end the top of the second. Florida State still with a one nothing lead. Well, ACC tournament starts on Wednesday, so let's take a look at what the Panthers need to do to secure their spot. They have to match what North Carolina does this weekend to clinch a spot in the tournament. So if the Tar Heels, who are taking on Louisville, end up winning one of those games against the Cardinals, Panthers will need to match that. Panthers in the 10 spot right now in Boston College, sitting just behind North Carolina. But as you see there, the Pitt Panthers have to match what North Carolina does this weekend in their series against Louisville. And of course, Matt, we can have some weather this weekend in Pittsburgh, maybe some game time changes, things like that. North Carolina scheduled for their doubleheader Sunday against Louisville and Pitt scheduled for a doubleheader tomorrow, but should be an interesting weekend. Of course, a lot could change by the time we get to Sunday. And as you see there, current score in North Carolina, Louisville five in the Tar Heels one. But the beauty of softball in this weekend is that North Carolina will have their chances to potentially make a run here and try and get that 10th spot from the Panthers. Yeah, and we'll keep you updated on that score throughout the day, I'm sure throughout the weekend as well. Uh, you know, a couple things on that wild card, certainly as you alluded to, is the weather, right? All of this is based on winning percentage in conference. And obviously, if you play less games, your winning percentage all of a sudden uh, is, is a little different uh, than maybe some other teams that maybe play a little bit more, a little bit less games. Secondly, if you're a Pitt Panther softball fan, if you're a Pitt Panther softball player, who would have thought that you'd be rooting for former coach Holly April <laughs> coaching the Louisville Cardinals against the North Carolina Tar Heels this weekend? Take a look at that grab real quick. Kat Sandercock with a quick reaction there off the liner back from Sarah Siemens. Showing that she is not only one of the best pitchers in the conference, but maybe one of the best defensive pitchers as well. There you go. Athlete in the circle. I love it. But Matt, that's right, Panthers certainly hoping for some help from the Louisville Cardinals this weekend. If North Carolina does end up getting swept, that certainly bodes well for Pitt. Because again, Panthers are currently in the ACC tournament if things ended today. But the Tar Heels, and again, Boston College, with their chances this weekend to potentially take that 10th spot. And when we talked about this with Coach Hermanic, this is the type of leader she is. She said, well, we need to win. We don't, we don't need to worry about what they do. We don't need to match them or anything like that. We need to go out and take care of business for ourselves. We control our own destiny. And that's a great feeling as a coach, as a player, when you control your own destiny. And, uh, you know, Panthers absolutely have it in their control to go out and take care of business this weekend. And now Levesque with a shot to right field. Over there to make the grab. No, it falls out of her glove is Harding. So Levesque is going to make her way all the way over to third. And Hunter Levesque will take third base after Harding bobbled it in right field. And that is a break that the Panthers will certainly take. After a dreary day, all day here in Pittsburgh, the sun comes up and it looks like gave some trouble. Levesque really moving it out of the box, able to get to third with less than two outs. The Panthers are in business and it looked like she just took her eye off it out there in right. And the sun, as you said, Matt, has come out here in Pittsburgh this evening. And Kaylee Harding will certainly want that one back. Puts Levesque on third. And brings Walker Barbie to the plate. And we talked about it. Harding was recruited as a catcher, right? As it played shortstop last weekend, out there and right today. I don't think it was a mechanical issue. I think she's plenty athlete, plenty mechanically driven enough to play out there. Maybe just, uh, you know, a, a took her mind into a different place or the sun played a factor. Either way, a huge play. Grounder over to third. And throw made easily to first so just like that despite the error in right field there's two quick outs there for the Seminoles and well how about that I guess the cards flew out from Walker Barbie there 
Oh, yeah, and Sandra Cock <laughs> picks up her teammate, right? Sandra Cock, you That's see right. there, I bet as soon as she made, or made that pitch and got the out at third base, they both looked out to right field and said, hey, we got your back, right? Now there's a runner on third with two outs, and all she has to do is get out Logo Sanchez. Didn't expect Kat Sandercock would panic in, in that scenario there, despite a, a runner on third and just one out. One of the top pitchers in the country in Sandercock, and now trying to keep the Panthers scoreless here in the second. And it looked like a, a drop, maybe even a change up there, getting Sanchez out front. And Sandercock now one strike away from getting her team off the field here in the second. O2 oh, pitch coming. And Sanchez stays alive, fouls it back. Sander Cock, a former member of the All-ACC freshman team back in 2019, and leading the team in ERA this season. O2 once again. Sanchez maybe with a little bit of a check swing there, but will stay alive as that one's high. And she goes to the rise there. The, the, the rise ball has really been something that, that she's been working with with this coaching staff, really a pitch that she's looking to develop. She always had it, right? But now she's turning it into that swing and miss type there, just a little bit high, but you see the check swing almost gets Sanchez. And that time, once again, Sanchez able to foul it off and hang in there. And it's scary for the rest of the ACC, right? You know, already a part of, uh, Sander Cock was already a part of the all ACC freshman team. And this year taking another step forward in that maturation process in the circle of developing that rise. Uh, it, you know, she's only going to be more formidable as her years continue. You see, it looked like it might have clipped the knee of catcher Anna Shellnut there. Right off the top of the padding there. Might have caught her kneecap. But shell not out in the circle with her team. Looks like she might be able to walk it off and stay in there. Yeah, no matter how much padding you have there, Jason, I'm sure it doesn't feel very good. Oh, yeah. So Sandercock, 1-2. Levesque still on third base here, bottom of the second, Lolo Sanchez. Would even the score with a base hit. Here's the pitch, and once again, Sanchez fouls it back. She's making her work for it. Certainly, she's, she's put good swings on and, and held off all of Sander Cott's pitches here. She's really going uh, to the well. I wouldn't be surprised she goes back to the rise here. She's gone down with a little bit of a change, a little bit of a drop. Uh, she's changed the eye level already once. Almost got Sanchez. I wouldn't be surprised if she goes back to it. And that time she gets her. Kat Sandercock with her first strikeout of the evening. And Florida State holds on to their 1-0 lead with the K. Well, you take a look there at E.C. Taylor out tonight with an ankle injury suffered against Boston College in the Panthers' last series, and she had been swinging it just about as good as anybody in the conference, and as you see there, can do it on the base paths as well. Certainly a tough loss for the Panthers this weekend because E.C. Taylor has been fantastic for Pitt. Yeah, A.C. Taylor absolutely saw their 27 steals, an offensive pressure juggernaut here in the ACC. But in these last eight games where Pitt has really turned it on, she's hit north of 600. She has been absolutely the straw that, that, that stirs this Panthers drink, and it's a huge loss not having her in the lineup today. Yeah, Taylor, 17 of 27 in her last eight games for the Panthers. And as you see there, as you said, Matt, a batting average of over 600, has scored at least a run in seven of the last eight, and 12 total runs in just eight games for Taylor. 
So how about Sanchez hey. with the scoop? Very nice play, really good hand. Sanchez breaks early on the on the softly hit ball and says, hey, I don't, I don't need to throw it over. <laughs> I'll flip it right on over here. That's right. I love it. You think Sarah Seaman saw it coming? Hey, I, I bet they have practiced that play a oh, yeah. thousand times. That That's something you don't do unless you're really <laughs> confident. And you see, she's not even smiling. She expected to make that play. That's right. So heads up play in the field by Sanchez as we head back to the top of the order for Elizabeth Mason. And Matt, you do have to credit Brittany Knight. This is a Florida State team that is top 10 in the country. And she has already made her way through the order with just one hit. Yeah, she's pitched great. I mean, there isn't a doubt about that. A small blemish with the solo home run to center. But one time through the lineup, she's mixed her pitch as well. She's done a really good change, good drop, good curve. Uh, she's kept these Florida State hitters off balance. And if she does this, she continues to keep Pitt in the game. They have every opportunity to win down the stretch. And for the Panthers, of course, at the plate, all about catching a break when taking on one of the top pitchers in the country in Kat Sandercock. And of course, last inning nearly got that opportunity with Hunter Levesque getting to third off the error. But still plenty of softball left to be played, not only tonight, but of course this weekend as well. So 3-1 count here for Elizabeth Mason. Went down looking in her first at bat today. And that one is in the dirt for ball four. Yeah, and, and, and Brittany Knight has been pitching fantastic, but a problem when you do get behind, right? It gets to a point then when the hitters start to expect those off-speed pitches in those hitters' counts. They no longer sit fastball once they've seen it a time or two. And those pitches traditionally have a lower strike percentage. So if you're not getting the chases because they're unexpected, and let's say like that change up there that you're not able to throw in the zone, now it leads to walks and something. That, that's why, you know, as a coach, you don't teach get behind the count and then throw some nasty stuff. You always teach kind of get ahead. And um, as, as that's when Brittany gets in trouble, that's exactly what happens. So here is the one seminal with a hit off Brittany Knight today. And Sydney Sherrill, redshirt junior from Oklahoma, hit her first home run of the season in her first plate appearance this evening. And one of the most consistent players on this Florida State team. We talked about how impressive Lonnie Alameda's resume is as Mason easily slides to steal second. But Sidney Sherrill's resume is right up there as well. And if you're talking about players that have been integral to this Florida State dominance over the last few years, Sidney Sherrill has been just that. As you see a replay there of the steal from Mason. They see Mason take the bag, but Sydney Sherrill absolutely is one of those culture builders for this Florida State program. You see, you know, she came into to this week with zero home runs, but clearly has power, as you saw there in the first. She's the type of player that can lead a team, that can absolutely put the team on her back for several weeks once she gets hot. Uh, and that's something that Coach Alamina talked about is, is Sydney Sherrill's really the, the person that, that we need to get the power back for us to get where we need to go. And how about Elizabeth Mason? Smart on the base paths there. Got caught in the middle, almost looked like she was gonna get caught in a rundown, but Walker Barbie ended up throwing it to second instead of third. So Mason uses that and said, all right, I'm headed to third then, and steals the base. Yeah, you know, you're Walker Barbie, you gotta be careful of something like this. So clearly she was relatively close to second, but with somebody with that type of speed that is clearly playing with you a little bit out there, maybe you wanna throw that ball to the lead base to make sure worst case scenario, she goes back to where she started. Uh, you know, it looked like she, well, Barbie got a little bit aggressive, tried to back pick, and it just wasn't there. And so for Mason, the 16th stolen base of the season, which now leads this Florida State team came into this evening with 14 and of course picked up two right there. Making it runners on first and third for the Knolls. Two walks to start the inning for Brittany Knight. And we talked about that short leash. Abby Edwards already down in the pen, already throwing. As we see a, a single to center field. That's right, routine base hit up the middle for Kaylee Harding will score Elizabeth Mason. 
and give Florida State a 2-0 lead. Already makes up a little bit for that, that drop fly ball out there with the first pitch line drive single to center. Looks like she got it a little bit, yeah, I see there off the end of the bat, but was strong enough to punch it through to give the Seminoles a 2-0 lead. And just a few feet over that outstretched glove of Lolo Sanchez. Matt, you mentioned the short leash for Brittany Knight. And now Florida State with a 2-0 lead here in the top of the third. Jody Hermanic having a conversation with her team in the circle. And as you said as well, Abby Edwards in the bullpen. Yeah, Coach Manick's talking about piecing together these games, right? You know, she hasn't had a dominant arm in the way, the same way Florida State has where she can just sit back and watch. You know, both uh, Brittany Knight uh, and Abby Edwards have been that at times. So she's looking to give each of them an opportunity to be that in games that they can win. Joining Abby Edwards in the bullpen there is Mackenzie Stiles. Of course, another challenge for these coaches when looking at this weekend. Have to, of course, remember that there are still three games left in this series. Yeah, sometimes coaches, uh, especially in four-game series, uh, softball series, they want to save arms for other games so that the other team hasn't seen them, so that there's somebody new, somebody fresh. But I think when the playoffs are at stake, uh, when conference tournament championships are at stake, you got to get the arm out there that, that can win it. And Harding, with no hesitation, goes for second. She's in there, and that allows Cheryl to score. So Florida State extends the lead now to 3-0 on the double steal. An unfortunate play there for the Panthers. Barbie comes up throwing and, and had uh, Harding out at second base. But on the slide, yep, looks like ball pops right out of her glove and then it allows that run to come in, Cheryl to come in and score. An unfortunate break for the Pitt Panthers. Yeah, Panthers, as you said, nearly had the out there at second but instead allows the Florida State run to score. Kaylee Harding with her ninth stolen base of the year. And if you're a Florida State fan, right, this this uh, this type of offense this year might look a little bit differently. You know, we talked to Coach Alameda, she said, hey, Florida State offenses are, are known for extra base hits, home runs, having some power. This year, very much a small ball type team, very much a short game type team, and we're seeing it here early uh, in the third inning. And so brings up Cassidy Davis, walked in the first inning. Short grounder back tonight. Knight will opt to go to third. And out of third is Kaylee Harding. And so Brittany Knight with the risky play there to throw over to third instead of getting the force out at first, but it pays off. Yeah, but that's just bad base running by the freshman Harding. She has to know that if the ball's going to get to the pitcher, she has to hang tight. The pitcher's the only person that can make the play on her, maybe besides the third baseman on that play. And, and she took off a little too early. If she just waits, let's say, uh, for Knight to throw the ball to first base, she has a much better opportunity. Still not the greatest of plays, uh, but that's tough base running for the freshman. She'll learn. She'll know better as her career unfolds. Super close call there at third, two. Very tight play, but the Panthers get the out. And it brings up Kirsten Landers. 0 for 1 today. That one's outside and fouled off. Landers was injured in the series against NC State, and Lonnie Alameda was not sure if she'd get back for this weekend, but certainly a key contributor for Florida State in that five hole and coach is happy to have her back. Yeah, she talked about that. She said, hey, we get Landers back. It's, a, it's an absolutely huge gain for us. Um, it's a power left-handed bat. It's gonna bat in the middle of our lineup. And uh, obviously she's in the lineup today for Florida State. So Florida State gets a player back and Pitt loses one in EC Taylor. And Lonnie Alameda looks like she's going to bring in a pinch runner here. And Cassidy Davis will step back into the dugout and stepping in is Dion Riggs for the Seminoles, freshman from Florida. Yeah, and Walker Barbie's got to be ready, right? So you're, you're getting a pinch runner with two strikes and two outs. There's one thought on Coach Alameda's mind, and that's getting another runner in scoring position they just lost with the base running error. 
Yeah, ball in the dirt there, and she's going, and it hits off the glove of Batesol. She's all the way over to third. And Matt, I'll be honest with you, two strikes, two outs. I wasn't 100% sure about the decision there to put in Dion Riggs, but that's why I'm not a softball coach. Riggs is all the way over to third. Yeah, hey, that's why we don't have, uh, you know, Women's College World Series championship <laughs> ring, right? I mean, an absolutely great play, getting the runner now to third base with two outs. But again, another missed ball at, at shortstop. Uh, you know, that was another runner that Barbie had out. Ball beater. Just couldn't squeeze it. So pitch outside there makes it 2-2. And just like that, Panthers go from two outs and a runner just on first to a possible chance here for Kirsten Landers to drive in that run. And Landers goes down swinging there. So Florida State leaves one on third base, but they score two to take a 3-0 lead. 3-0 Florida State as we head to the bottom of the third, and it started with a solo shot from Sydney Sherrill, her first of the year, and came in the top of the first inning. So a quick start for the Seminoles, and then last inning in the third, Florida State on just one hit, able to add two more runs. Yeah, the story of last inning has to be the defense, right? We, you know, it couple of runners that were caught stealing ball beats them but unable to hold on to it uh, was the shortstop Batesel but Cheryl gets off gets that zero out of the home run column I bet that's been bugging her for quite some time I think I saw it in that hug might have been a little <laughs> finally a little after the career she's there. had absolutely right. Sydney Cheryl plenty of home runs in her Florida State career just was struggling to get that first one this season. 2018, she had 12, 2019 had 16, had four in the shortened season last year. And now finally getting that first home run in the final series of the regular season for the Seminoles. Yeah, I, mean, I think that can be attributed to a couple things. I think, you know, as you've had a career like that, it's, it's very easy to press and try and do too much. I think it's very easy to, let's say, make a couple of uh, mechanical adjustments, then all of a sudden some balls that used to leave the yard turn into very hard hit singles. You know, she's still having a very good year offensively. It's just that number isn't matching up to what it's been in, in previous years. So it could be a number of things, but what better time to get back in the home run column than right into tournament play, regional, super regional, hopefully college World Series play if you're a Seminole fan. And Florida State certainly expecting to be in contention for another national title. And now one, two to Morgan Batesall to start the bottom of the third. Yeah, Batesall making her work a little bit here as, as Sandra Kai has just blown through this lineup in the first uh, first two innings. Very small amount of pitches, at the end, you know, somewhere in the 20s coming into the inning. And gets Batesall swinging on the high pitch there. And as you said, Matt, just 25 pitches right now for Cap Sander Kai. And for the second straight hitter, it looks like she goes to a little bit of a rise ball to get the strikeout. Again, it's something that, that she's worked with Coach Alamina with, trying to perfect that and turn that into a true swing and miss pitch, as opposed to a contact pitch maybe when she's behind in the count. So it brings up Hannah Beach. Nine hitter in the Panther lineup. Again, started in right field this evening. Bates with a 250 average on the season. How about this moment here for Hannah Bates? Again, not a usual starter for the Panthers, but gets thrust into the lineup and has to take on one of the top pitchers in the country in Kat Sandercock. Yeah, hey, welcome to the lineup, right? You know, you're <laughs> going to face a top 10 team in the country and you're going to face one of the best pitchers in the country. Uh, but I think, I think Bates is up to the chest, though. Making her work here early, 2-1 count to Beach. And a Beach local player went to Yak High School. And 
Strike two there. Panthers still looking for their first hit of the evening. So two two pitch coming for Beach. Chandler Walter in the on deck circle, and Beach goes down swinging. Sandercock has her third strikeout of the day. Yeah, and just a really good job of pitching there. She goes rise early in the count, rise again up and away, and ties her up with two strikes with the curveball in. Just a really, really, really good sequence. And not just the third strikeout of the day for Sandercock, but three consecutive strikeouts over the course of the last three batters, all of them swinging. But Walter breaks the streak there with a ground out and an easy throw over to first. And Sandercock has got it all going. Florida State still up. So we take a look at the Florida State all-time home run leaders in four names that are on the current roster make the top ten. As you see, Sydney Sherrill, after her solo shot in the first, moves just one behind that sixth spot all-time. But, Matt, if you want to know about their dominance offensively, just take a look at this. Four players on this list. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, four batters that all have hit in the middle lineup for Florida State over the last few years. And if you look at that, that list there, you see some big names in college softball and quite an accomplishment to be mentioned with some of those names. And again, goes back to... What Sydney Sherrill has done throughout her career. Again, no shortage of home runs throughout her time as a Seminole, but this season just waiting for that first one. Finally got it tonight. And as you said, Matt, couldn't have come at a better time. Heading into the ACC tournament this week, of course, Florida State will be in the NCAA tournament as well after that. And Sydney Sherrill finally gets that first homer of the year. Anna Shellnut on that list as well, and she's at the plate for Florida State now. Yeah, and going back to Cheryl, I mean, really pretty left-handed swing. Uh, as you saw in the first inning, ball just jumps off of her bat. Not surprised that she's had the career she's had offensively in terms of power. Uh, you know, I'm going to be really interested to see what happens going forward, not only the rest of this weekend, but as you said, into the tournament play uh, to see where that number gets up to. I, I always say, you know, you're... you're you kind of are what your averages say. And over the course of a season, if you're a 300 hitter, you're going to hit 300. If you're a 10 home run girl, you're going to hit 10 home runs. And I wouldn't be surprised if she gets close to that number. And a hard hit liner there for a base hit from Anna Shellnut. So Shellnut will reach first. And that was her first hit in a couple of weeks. Again, did not have a hit last weekend against NC State in 12 at bats. But finally, Ends the drought, and the Seminoles have their third hit of the evening. It brings up Devin Flaherty. Flaherty struck out swinging back in the second. Redshirt freshman from Sarasota, Florida, with four homers on the year and coach Alameda was proud of her at bats last weekend against NC State she was four for ten in that series with a double and three runs and that time over the glove of Batesol and back-to-back -back base hits to left field for Florida State yeah really good swing there takes the pitch down and away and goes with it to another line drive out to left field Florida State is in business here with nobody out uh, in the fourth inning some more action going again in the Panthers' bullpen. Yes! Missed it. There's Batesol there at short, as you said, Matt. Nearly able to get her glove on that one. I think she needed the 12-inch glove, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Just another inch or two. Yeah. Might have had that one. Eight hitter in the lineup for Florida State is Josie Muffley. Looking to continue this hitting streak here in the fourth. But a soft grounder, and that one is overthrown to Siemens at first. And that will allow Shellnut to score. And Florida State will have runners 
on the corners after the third Panther error of the ball game. Yeah, miscue there by Bates. So I think that she's sat back a little bit too much on this ground ball. You see there, she puts on the brake so she doesn't hit the runner and sits back a little bit, which caused her to try to overthrow it to first base. Just a little bit out of the reach there for Compton at first. And scores the run in Shellnut to make it 4 nothing here in the top of the fourth. And, you know, Matt, one thing that Jody Hermanic talked to us about is their success over the course of the last eight games has been driven by what she calls grade A performances. They have really played clean softball throughout the last eight games. But when you're taking on the ninth ranked team in the country, you can't afford to have three errors in the first four innings. Yeah, and grade A performance is not being anything that you're not. It's not being, you know, a superstar player when you're a role player. It's not, it, it, it's playing at the best that you can possibly play and staying within yourself. And one of those things is making the routine plays. Right, you know, a couple of, of, of stolen bases that, that would have been taken off the board there and a ground ball that, you know, taken uh, a run off the board if the play was made. And now a potential run down there, but Matt, once again, a missed opportunity for the Panthers as Batesel was trying to keep an eye on Muffley while also considering Flaherty over at third. And it's been the common theme for Florida State. They play small ball and they are aggressive on the base paths. And all day, they've been causing confusion for the Panthers defensively. Yeah, and if you're Florida State, right, you know, at, at this point, you've seen a few uh, mistakes by the Panthers. You want to create more opportunities for them to make those mistakes. And that's exactly what Coach Alamina was doing there. That, that was a steal and stop. She stole and stopped halfway. Barbie makes a throw to second. And then the decision gets made by the shortstop, whether you know, we run it back to first base or we throw the ball to third. Fortunately, you know, worst case scenario if you're the Panthers, if you want the same situation you just had, right? No mistake was made, but to your point, it was an opportunity to get an out. So choppy grounder back tonight. She'll opt to go home. Here we go. Another possible rundown. No way the Panthers could mess that one up as Barbie easily tags Flaherty. And Flaherty had nowhere to go. Of course, Muffley coming all the way over to third base. I also really have to like, take a look at who made it to second. Danny Morgan, the batter on the play, made it to second base there. Yep, and that's what really good teams do, right? So, you know, caught in a, in a little bit of a base running error again, not, you know, running when the ball's back to the pitcher, but uh, her teammate is able to get her back and get to second base. So there's still two runners in scoring position uh, with just one away. So again, if you're Pitt, yes, you got the lead runner, no runner scored. But if you're Florida State, great base running getting you still in a scoring position uh, with the middle of your lineup. I'm sorry, the top of your lineup coming up. And Elizabeth Mason is at the top of the order for Florida State. A strikeout and a walk today for her, but now two in scoring position for the Seminoles who have a 4-0 lead. And that has to be frustrating. Of course, we talked a little bit about early on, Brittany Knight was really successful in the circle and still only allowed four hits, but hate to see three errors on the board, four hits and four runs allowed. And now a liner there to Sanchez and starting to work her way out of this. Yeah, and you know, there really hasn't been that much hard contact against her. Obviously, the ball leaving the yard was hit hard. A couple of singles to start this inning were, were hit pretty good. But it's been more of the confusion and more of the offensive aggressiveness from Florida State that has put the pressure on Pitt's defense that has caused it to be four runs instead of maybe one or two, which is what they've really earned with their bats. They've earned the other runs with their legs uh, and playing the small ball offensively. But that's what you have to do, Jason. You know, that, if you're not going to be the offense that's going to hit the extra base hits, that's going to drive the ball out of the yard, you have to be really good at other ways of creating offense. And one of those ways is certainly on the base pass, creating pressure. And, you know, those errors weren't unforced errors. Uh, all three errors by Pitt were forced on the aggressiveness of Florida State. You know, the hard uh, run to first base, the couple of stolen bases that, that would have been, you know, they were certainly forced errors by Florida State. And Cheryl swings at the low pitch there. 2-1 count, two outs. 
Runners on second and third here in the top of the fourth. And this is a big A-B. I mean, you have Cheryl up. She's already left the yard today. You have two runners in scoring position. You got two strikes now. If you're able to get out of this inning, although you're down four to nothing, you have a little bit of momentum on your side. If you allow Cheryl to cash in and get a couple of RBIs here, all of a sudden, Florida State's maybe running away with this one. And we still have a few innings to go. 2-2 pitch to Cheryl. Inside for ball three. Cheryl today, two trips to the batter's box and two runs. And a big pitch coming up here. Full count, two outs. Muffley on third, Morgan on second. Here's the 3-2 pitch from Knight. Inside, Cheryl will walk for the second time today. Yeah, not the worst thing, right? You had the base open. You can be a, you know, a nibble on those corners a little bit more than maybe you would have. Uh, but now that puts your back against the wall. Uh, Brittany Knight needs to come out and get ahead in the count and throw some quality pitches here against the three-hole hitter Harding. Uh, Harding's gone up the middle a few times. Um, one out being made by the second baseman, one being a single to center field. Big opportunity here for the freshman, Kaylee Harding. And soft liner over to Siemens at first. So Knight works her way out of it. Net Seminoles leave three on, but they've got a 4-0 advantage. Of the second game of a four-game weekend series, the final games of the regular season between number 21 Duke and NC State at Dale Stadium in Raleigh. Coverage of the first game of the doubleheader beginning at 4.30 Eastern on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. You can watch ACC softball all season long right here on the ACC Network and live on the ESPN app. Back here at Vardabedian Field and Matt, we talk about Duke, we talk about this conference, Florida State and Clemson solidly at the top, but Duke is a team that could be sneaky. And earlier in the year, you and I talked to Shannon Depp King, head coach of Syracuse, and she had just played Duke at the time and said, Duke is a team that could be an under the radar sleeper in this conference and is a team that really does just about everything well. Yeah, and in, in college softball, when you have an ace on the mound, you're able to beat anybody. You can keep your, keep your team in the ball game. And in the ACC, you know, you see that at Duke, you see it at Virginia Tech. You see it at, at Florida State with the three aces that they have, um, and then obviously at Clemson. So, you know, there, there's four schools that can really vie for that ACC title. And how about that? A deep shot to left field from Kayla Lane. And the Panthers are on the board thanks to the sh solo shot from Kayla Lane. And sometimes all it takes is one swing and the rest of your lineup can see, you know what, we can do it too. Kayla Lane takes the pitch down and in, drives it over the fence. Uh, just an absolutely fantastic swing from the right-handed hitter. No question about that one. Deep over the wall in left field. And potentially a chance to provide some momentum here for the Panthers in the bottom of the fourth. And Kayla Lane is one of those play players that Coach Romanic talks about as, as, as a true culture builder for the program. She's changed positions. She's played third. She's played short. She has moved in the lineup. She has been what Coach Romanic needs her to be and couldn't say enough great things about her. I bet that feels really good for that, that Pitt Panther dugout. That's right, Jody Hermanic has been super impressed with Kayla Lane, was recruited as a middle infielder. Sixth home run of the season for Kayla Lane, who's now playing third base for the Panthers. And also started the year at the bottom of the lineup and now all the way up to the two hole doing a tremendous job for Pitt and providing a spark here in their first hit of the ball game off Cat Sandercom. Yeah, and sometimes this Pitt, this new Pitt softball stadium at, with the shorter fence at 200 all the way around and the wind that goes, uh, that blows out a good amount, gets a little bit of a hard time because of the offense that it provides. But both home runs today, especially that home run there from Lean, would have gone out of any park in the ACC. And we've got back-to-back -back hits here for the Panthers as Cammie Thompson drops that one in just left 
of that first baseline in right field, and she's all the way to second with the double. And don't look now. All of a sudden, Pitt Panther's starting to come around. Right, that ball looks like a, would have brought up some chalk if it wasn't down there uh, with, with the turf outfield. Gets into second base easily for the stand-up double. And the umpires look like they're having a conversation about that one again, trying to figure out where exactly it landed. But Cammie Compson with a big-time hit there. To keep the rally going here for Pitt, and nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. And a little bit of conversation here between the, the umpiring crew and that Florida State dugout, but nobody had a better look than that first base umpire. I think that ball probably landed about seven feet uh, past him, so uh, I, th I, think he, I think he saw it best. So a homer from Lane, a double from Compson, and it brings up Sarah Siemens, who has also had a fantastic year for Pitt. Her and Compson have really been a solid one-two punch in the heart of the lineup all year long for the Panthers. Now a big opportunity here. Compson took a generous lead at second, but dives her way back. Twelve home runs, as you see there on the year for Siemens. That's a team high. Pitch inside there, but called for strike two. Yeah, and, Co and Coach Hermanic tells a funny story about Sarah Siemens and, and just how humble she is, not knowing uh, you know, how good she is. You see there her, her improvement month to month. Uh, he said, hey, you know, Sarah, tell me that some of the top hitters in the ACC. And Sarah, went, you know, she listed some of the top hitters and said, you know what, that's what other programs think about you. And deep left field there for Siemens. But back to make the catch there. Florida State, like Dion Riggs in left field. But Matt, it was a great story. And she, Jody Hermanic, trying to stir some confidence within Sarah Seaman, saying, hey, those players that you just listed, when these other teams scout, they're focusing on you. And Sarah Siemens, of course, taking that to heart has had a tremendous year. And I think as a player, that that's relatively easy to do. I think that when you know when you're a good, you know, when you're a hard worker and you put your nose down and you do the things that you need to do, like Sarah Siemens does, when all of that starts to pay off and the numbers start to reflect the hard work that you've put in, sometimes the last person to notice it is you. Sometimes everybody else can see it, uh, and you just need to be uh, uh, proving it from from your coaching staff and. Uh, I, I can tell you, you know, she absolutely is batting in the, in the heart of this Panther lineup uh, for a reason. And when other teams game plan against Pitt, she's got to be one of the first names mentioned. So first pitch inside there to Levesque, but call for strike number one. You see two fly outs, five ground outs, and three strike outs for Sandercock, who was no hitting the Panthers up until this inning, and now a home run from Lane and the double from Compson. Breaking that three inning no hitter from Sandercock, but now Levesque up as well in the five hole for the Panthers, someone who has been swinging it well lately on a five game hit streak entering tonight. Yeah, and you know she wants to keep that going here as a, as a senior and in her last weekend playing here in Pittsburgh uh, on the Verbatim Field, I, you know she wants to keep that streak going. So 4-1 Florida State here in the bottom of the fourth. And a 1-2 count with one out to Hunter Levesque. Cammie Compson is on second. 1-2 pitch, fouled behind. Back reaching third base on an error earlier in the game. Of course, had a deep fly ball to right field. Kaylee Harding might have lost it in the sun, and Levesque made her way all the way around to third. Now an opportunity with Compson on second and one out for Levesque. Grounder back to Sandercock. 
will take the shore out at first. Yeah, off-speed pitch takes Sandercock a little bit to first base on a ground ball, allows the runner to move up. So now runner on third base here with two outs. Uh, if you remember a couple innings ago, the ground ball took uh, Brittany Knight towards third base, and they were able to get the out at third. So a little bit different in the base running and how this Panthers now for Florida State. Barbie with a drive to left field. It's gone. Walker Barbie with her fifth home run of the season, and that makes it a one-run ball game. And Walker Barbie with the exclamation point here in the fifth ball. I'm sorry, the fourth ball absolutely mashed to left field into the batting cage. A big home run bringing the Panthers within one. Second home run of the inning for Pittsburgh. And they are not going away. Getting the bats going against one of the top pitchers in the ACC in Kat Sandercock. And look at the elation from the Panther fans at Vardabedian Field as suddenly we have a one-run ball game. Absolutely, and don't look now. The bullpen's going for Florida State. Short leash for them as well. They know, as much as we've talked about this game being so important for Pitt, it's, if, you, if you talk to the Florida State coaching staff, it's just as important to them. So the Panthers rallying here in the bottom of the fourth. And again, even more impressive that they're doing so against one of the top pitchers in the country here in Kat Sandercock. And Sandercock went 21 straight innings in a stretch from March 26th to April 11th without allowing a single run. And here in game one of this series, Panthers giving her some trouble here in the fourth. Lolo Sanchez will look to continue the Panthers' hot bats here. And a liner well hit to right, and it's bobbled in right field by Harding. Sanchez to second. She's going for third. Lolo Sanchez with a stand-up triple. And the Panthers with their fourth hit of the inning. Absolutely. Sanchez takes the inside pitch, turns on it. Ball is hit really hard out to right. Again, might have been lost in the sun as it goes down here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Another ball misplayed defensively in this ball game. And all of a sudden, the Panthers got the tying run on third base here with two outs. And it will go down as an error by the right fielder, Harding. But Sanchez is into third base as the Panther dugout cheers are on. Pittsburgh really coming alive here in the fourth as the Seminoles head over to Kaylee Harding. Yeah, she's trying to outfield. wake up that glove out there. I uh, Shaking it around, I, I, I think um, that was another instance of either the sun getting in her eyes or maybe just taking her mind off it or eye off it a little bit. Because uh, that's a play she's got to make 10 times out of 10. And Matt, we talked about Kaylee Harding earlier, and, and Coach Lonnie Alameda mentioned that she has moved around a good bit throughout the season between catching, playing at short, playing in the outfield. But Alameda was proud of the way she's adjusted throughout all those positions. Didn't mention her really having any issues in the field whether it was in the outfield or at short, catching, but second time today, Harding has struggled. Well, here's a cool thing, right? For, for a young player, um, you know, a couple of errors today. You know, this is something that when everything goes right for you, it's very hard to make adjustments, very hard to get better. It's very hard uh, um, to continue to, to grow as a player. It's days like this defensively that, let's say she's going through the motions in off-season training, getting ready for next year. You can remember this and say, okay, this is why we're doing all of that. Um, so there's always a positive, and, and in the position that Florida State's in, already in the ACC tournament, uh, likely going to, to host uh, a regional and a super if they get there. You know, this isn't life or death necessarily for them, 
Uh, so this is a good learning opportunity. It's also a good learning opportunity for Sandra Cock on the mound of showing that she has her teammates' backs, that they can make mistakes, and she can still go out there and throw quality pitches. So it's a pinch hitter here for the Panthers, Bailey Drapola. 2-2 two -two count and two outs in the bottom of the fourth. What has been a power-filled inning for the Pitt Panthers as they have worked their way back in this contest. Opposite field there from Drapola, and that'll stay fair and score the run. Bailey Drapola with the pinch hit RBI single. Wow, and Coach Hermanic pressing the right buttons, getting the pinch hitter in there and delivers the two out RBI. An absolutely fantastic swing, keeping it fair, ties this ball game up. And what a rally here in the bottom of the fourth from Pitt. And this game has been flipped upside down. Florida State was up 4-0 with the bases loaded in the top of the fourth. Panthers got out of that, keeping it at a 4-0 score, and they matched that four runs here in the bottom of the fourth. The Panthers with an offensive explosion here to make this a tie game. Yeah, and if you go back to those those uh, innings defensively, you know, I, I said that this was a big out, and maybe some out there questioned that and said, hey, how could this be a big out? Florida State's up 4 nothing. There are pitchers throwing a no-hitter, but, uh, you know, it's a big out because if those two runs had cashed in and scored, all of a sudden maybe this isn't happening or their pit is still down even if this did happen. That's why those outs are huge. So Sander Cock, who has been all but invincible this season, will end her day 4-4 game. Back at Vardabedian Field following four runs in the bottom of the fourth for the Panthers. So Danielle Watson will now take the circle, trying to get Florida State finally out of this inning. And she'll enter with two outs and Bailey Drapola on first base. But Watson looking to end what has been just a miserable inning for Florida State. Absolutely. And Florida State goes to the hard thrower in Watson. You're going to see a fastball, uh, so, I'm sorry, velocity in between 68 and 71 miles an hour. Really working on getting a little bit of action to the ball, a little bit of sink. So strike one there to Hannah Beach. Danielle Watson threw Friday and Saturday last weekend against NC State for the Knolls. And here's what I'll tell you too. Watson's come in the game, something to watch for at home. Right, she's come in, she's thrown a couple of rise balls here at, at Vertibadian Field with a 200 foot fence. The rise ball is very susceptible to leave the yard if it's not in the right spot. We've seen it already a couple of times today. It's something Florida State has to keep in mind as they're calling these pitches. So Bates continuing to stay alive there, fouls that one off. Two pitch gets Bates swinging for strike three, but a huge inning for the Panthers. We've got a 4-4 game, not going to want to go anywhere. Jayla Lane with the homer and Walker Barbie. Couple of Panther bombs in the bottom of the fourth. So Brittany Knight is going to end up outlasting Katherine Sandercock today as we take a look at our starting pitchers in this one. As Sandercock was flawless through the first three innings of this game, but the Panthers with four hits and four runs, ending Sandercock's day there in the bottom of the fourth. And Brittany Knight will stay on the mound here, entering the top of the fifth as we continue on here from Varda Beattie in field. And Matt, you talked to me during the break and said we've got a new ball game, a three-inning game the rest of the way because we've got a tie score entering the fifth. Yeah, if you grabbed Coach Romantic for the game and you said, hey, you know, 0-0 ball game, you got to win three innings to win game one. Do you take it? I think she says absolutely. No doubt about it. And again, that's what she stressed to us when we talked to her. She said, 
Game one is the one we won. That's what her focus is on. Securing that game one victory would obviously put the Panthers in a great position to hold on to that number 10 seed and reach the ACC tournament for the first time since 2018. Yeah, and this is what we call a shutdown inning for Brittany Knight, right? Your team just put up four runs. All the momentum's on your side. You got the ace of the Florida State pitching staff off, or I'm sorry, out of the circle. Now you have to put up the zero. If you don't put up the zero in this inning, then you allow Florida State to kind of creep that door back open to maybe take it in these last three. She puts up a zero here. Momentum all stays in that Pitt Panther dugout and they got a real chance to win the ball game down the stretch. And hey, the Panthers have the top of the lineup coming up in the fifth inning. So this is huge for Pitt. As you said, if they can hold Florida State here, huge opportunity coming up when the Panthers come to bat. It's Dion Riggs at the plate for Florida State with a full count. She came in to pinch run for Cassidy Davis. 3-2 pitch from Knight. Grounded right back to her. Routine play over the first for Siemens. Panthers are one out into this fifth inning. And that really an incredible turnaround in that last inning. Saw a lot of offense from the Panthers, of course, in the fourth, but again, you go back to what Florida State had done in the top half of that inning. They were able to score a run and they put bases loaded on. Panthers got out of that jam, but this was potentially one swing away from being a 7-0 ball game heading into the bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, absolutely huge out there by Brittany Knight. And the way that Sandercock was throwing and the way that Florida State was defensively, one run felt like 10. Right. Right? And so you get that out, you get your team in the dugout, and then you, your offense provides you the support with the four runs. And it, it's crazy how this game in motion swings from dugout to dugout um, when there's those shutdown innings, when you get those big outs. So she's doing a fantastic job of keeping her team in the ball game. Um, although defensively, she wasn't getting a lot of the support. She's taking on a lot of that herself now. And Sander Cox has not allowed more than three runs since February 13th in just the second appearance of the season for her. Now, Matt, as you mentioned, of course, have to consider that you know, many of those were unearned runs by the Panthers, but still not familiar territory here for Sandercock to have her day cut short after four innings after allowing four runs. Yeah, I don't think right now, if you, if you look at her here, she's really thinking about her own earned run average. I think she's thinking that although maybe the runner shouldn't have been on, that although the inning maybe shouldn't have continued, uh, she still should have made more quality pitches to keep the ball in the ballpark. And how about that? Speaks to her excellence throughout the year. Two home runs tonight. Most of the season allowed by Kat Sandercock, and also goes to show how special that offensive display was in the bottom of the fourth for Pitt. So Landers will walk with one out here in the top of the fifth. Brittany Knight continues to work in the circle for the Panthers. And as you see there, approaching 100 pitches, and Jody Hermanic will take some time have a meeting with her infield in the circle. Yeah, and although the stats don't say, everybody knows Shellnut's uh, capability for, to leave the yard and to show some power, right? We, we showed the graphic a few innings ago. Uh, she's on the top list of, of most home runs in Florida State history. So this is a good time for Coach Herman to come out, give her senior a little bit of a deep breath, you know, talk a little bit about the plan to get this hitter out and go from there. This is a really good meeting. You see the out distribution for Brittany Knight. Four flyouts, six ground outs, and three strikeouts for her. And both pitchers today at times have fell victim to some defensive errors from the rest of the team. But 
we are knotted up at four nonetheless, and Brittany Knight continuing to work here in the top of the fifth, and as you said, facing Anna Shellnut. And a huge moment for Shellnut trying to get some offense going for the Knolls with one out here in the fifth. Shellnut entering tonight, just had two hits in her last nine games, was two for 28 in that span, but did get a single back in the fourth, but now just an easy grounder back tonight. Sanchez tries to turn two, but shall not able to make her way to first and is safe there. Yeah, and we've been told how good defensively Brittany Knight is in the circle, and we're really seeing a lot of comebackers. This one here shows great footwork, opening up to her glove side, delivering a good double play ball to Sanchez. Unfortunately, the speed of shall not gets there. But everything that she could have done, she did. Well done by the Panther defense as well. Not easy, of course, to turn a double play on a ground ball to the pitcher. But Sanchez with the quick turn nearly had her over at first. Yep, and then two outs now, right? So, so back to the point we made a few batters ago. Now Brittany Knight has to get her team off the field. Now's the time when no two-out damage uh, uh, needs to be done again to keep that momentum in the Pet Panther dugout. Got the strike on the off-speed pitch there. Makes it a 1-1 count for Devin Flaherty. One-one one pitch here. High and inside for ball two. Yeah, against a hitter like Flaherty, who's shown that she had hit a line drive on a hard pitch uh, to left field, you want to either go soft away or hard in. If you're soft away, it's going to get her a little bit out front and not allow her to extend his hands the same way she would, let's say, with a harder pitch away. Or you want to come hard in and force her to turn on the pitch. You see, she's pretty far off the plate. She'd like to extend those arms a little bit. Typically, where a hitter stands, they're telling you a story of what they want and maybe not want. Now on low and outside for ball three. The on deck circle for Florida State is Josie Muffley, who's 0 for 2 today. And Flaherty will take the walk and reach first. So Muffley comes up. In the eight hole for Florida State. Shortstop, Josie Buffalo. Runners on first and second here, but two outs for Brittany Knight and the Panthers. And for Knight, six walks on the day. But again, keeping Pitt in this game. And continuing to work here in the top of the fifth, looking to get out of the inning. We talked about how the Panthers have the top of the order coming up in the bottom of the fifth. And a 1-0 count to start for Muffley. one 0 pitch here. And choppy grounder in foul territory. Muffley was one for eight in the series against NC State last weekend. But has started every game this year for the Seminoles. You see there, 300 batting average with runners in scoring position. And she's got Shellnut on second. 1-1 one, one pitch, two outs, that's low and in. Muffley chasing on the outside there. So Brittany Knight works it back to 2-2. Two, two. two outs, one pitch away from getting out of the inning here in the top of the fifth. Thank you for Brittany Knight. No matter who's in the batter's box, this count, 2-2, two, two, two outs, runners' position, you throw your best pitch. 
That one's high and away. Tried to get her to chase once again. And I think you got to come back to it here, three and two. No matter whatever you thought your best pitch was, whatever was called there, I think you come back to it, three and two. Big pitch coming, three and two, two out. Here's the pitch from Knight to Muffley. Got her looking. Brittany Knight comes inside after working away, 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 and gets the huge strikeout as the Panthers' top of the order comes up here in the fifth inning. Welcome back to Varda Bedian Field where we've got a 4-4 ball game as we head to the bottom of the fifth and new to the circle. Starting in the last inning for the Seminoles is Danielle Watson as we take a look at Jody Hermanic trying to reach her first ACC tournament as the Panthers head coach. And Matt, one thing she told us is when she came to Pitt back in 2019, did not make it her first season here that immediately became her goal for this team and for her as the head coach of the Panthers to reach the ACC tournament the next opportunity they got. And of course, last season with the shortened year due to COVID-19, didn't get the chance to do that, but have put themselves in a great spot right here this season as the number 10 team right now. And right now tied with Florida State 4-4 heading to the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, you see there the ground ball is shortstop, but we talked about expectations with Florida State a few innings back, and the expectation is to be great, to win the ACC, uh, to go to a super. What Coach Hermanic is trying to do with this Pitt Panther softball team is to change the expectation to making sure that every year they're at the ACC tournament. And for a program like Pitt, that is certainly not outside the realm of possibility, and what she's excited about this year, she said it multiple times, is this year the ball is in our court. We don't have to depend on anybody else. And a diving attempt there in right field by Harding, but let's take a look back at what Lane did in the fourth inning in her last at bat, a deep shot to left field that served as the first hit of the day for the Panthers and ended up leading to a four-run inning in the fourth for Pitt. Kayla Lane led off that inning with that solo shot. Now up again, hoping to find base once again and potentially get some offense moving here in the fifth for the Panthers. Yeah, when you're facing an imposing pitcher, right? When you're facing a pitcher with really good stats, it, you know, sometimes it takes a, a swing like Lane had uh, last inning to prove to the rest of the team, like, hey, no, we can play with her. Right? There's nobody that's much better than we are. And you know that ball, like I said, it was absolutely touched. It was not a wall scraper. It got out by, by quite a bit. So I'm sure the rest of the dugout saw that and said, hey, yeah, if Kayla can do that, we can all do that. And clearly, that's exactly what happened. That's right, man. You have to imagine, especially when you're facing a pitcher like Kat Sandercock, when you go three innings and you're unable to get a hit off her, you start to drift into that mindset. And it's tough to get out of it. It's tough to avoid, but you go three innings against a pitcher like that and you can't find your way to earning a hit. A home run from Lane serves as a huge way, as you mentioned, to get the team going. But this time, Watson able to strike out Lane. So two quick outs for Florida State here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, and your floor, if you're Florida State, you say, okay, you got the cat? All right, we got another arm for you. Let's see if you can get to this one too. Well, Jody Hermanic made it clear that this Florida State team has three aces. And, of course, we'll see them all this weekend. Strike one there to Cammie Compson. Talked a lot about Kat Sandercock. This is Danielle Watson. And obviously expect to see Kaylin Arnold this weekend for the Knowles as well. In a break here by Coach Hermanic to, to, to break in momentum a little bit. Uh, that, that Watson has. Watson has really, really good stuff. Possibly the best stuff on the pure stuff on the staff. She throws really hard, has really good sync to her pitches, has a really true backspin rise ball uh, that is hard to pick up for the hitters, right? And at 62 to 64 miles an hour, it almost works as a changeup too. So it's, it's a really interesting pitch that is not what hitters see a fair amount of time. And you talk about analytics of pitching. Sometimes it's not always the nastiest spin and break 
that get and that become hard to hit. It's the pitches that are just different from ones that you traditionally see. And that's the rise ball that Watson has. And Matt, that's what Lonnie Alameda told us, is that not many pitchers out there have that true backspin that you will see Danielle Watson use. She's a transfer from Louisville who led the team with 88 strikeouts in 2019 back with the Cardinals and now, of course, one of Florida State's top arms here in 2021. Yeah, very good get in the transfer portal for Florida State. And, you know, when you're a program, it's just it's just the rich getting richer a little bit. Gets Compson swinging on the outside there. So Danielle Watson with a hot start to her day. We've still got an even game, two innings to play. Tomorrow we'll have the second game of a three-game weekend series between number 18 Florida State and number 7 Notre Dame in South Bend. We'll also have the series finale on Sunday. Coverage of game two tomorrow starting at 1 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. How about Notre Dame? Number 7 in the country. Tremendous what Link Jaron has done with that ball club this year. And as you see here, Matt, we have got an outstanding game in the top of the sixth. Yeah, absolutely. This game has all of a sudden turned into a two-inning ball game. For, for Pitt, you are right where you want to be. And if you're Florida State, you can't get psyched out because you expected maybe to be up big by this point. You know, this has to be used as a, as, as a way of learning because these close games are inevitably going to happen as they get to an ACC championship and possibly a Women's College World Series. So I think Coach Lani Almina is going to really be watching your team to say, hey, how do you react in a tie game in, in the in the sixth? Um, you know, this is a really good coaching opportunity. Well, the other interesting point I thought Lani Alameda made in our conversation with her was, you know, what what is missing from a team like Florida State that seems to have everything working at this point in the season? What do you need to improve on? What can you do? to make a run in the NCAA tournament. And she said, hey, you know, all these teams in the top 10, top 15, they're prepared, they're ready. They have everything it takes. It's just a matter of who has it rolling at the right time. Yeah, and what she also brought up into, in that same point is that, you know, you don't know. You think that you coach your team to be able to prepare for adversity. You think that you teach your pitchers how to pitch in tough spots, but you don't know until you get put in that situation. And this is certainly one of those situations where, you know, you see how you taught late game scenario. You see how you taught pitching with the game on the line. Um, but she did mention, hey, you want to peak at the right time. Uh, the Pitt Panther team is certainly peaking as of right now. And I think Florida State coming into this weekend is also getting to that peak. Um, both teams do have more to climb, though. And this game is proof that anything can happen at this point in the season. And certainly the ACC tournament, NCAA tournament, won't be lacking in terms of possible upsets. And like Coach Alameda said, anybody really could make a run and win the whole thing. It's just a matter of who's getting hot come mid-May. 3-0 pitch to start the inning, but home plate umpire calls time. It looked like Brittany Knight went off balance a little bit in that delivery. She regained. I uh, went into the pitch, but home plate umpire didn't like what he saw and he called timeout. Brittany Knight, very persistent today. Still working here in the top of the sixth and that will be the seventh walk of the game for the Florida State batters. So brings up Sidney Sherrill, who homered back in the first and then walked in the third and fourth as we take a look at her history of home run hitting. And there it is, 32 homers in her first three seasons as a Seminole. And so far this year went 45 games without being able to notch one, but here in the 46th finally gets one over that center field wall here at Varda Bedian Field. 
and can breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, absolutely. I bet that felt really good. Not only the ball was was blasted quite some some ways, but also when you're used to being that power bat, when you're used to seeing the ball go over the fence, uh, it's nice to see. It's not like a three-point shooter going cold for a couple of weeks and then seeing the ball go through the basket a few times. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing how it has a tendency to, uh, to lead to a little bit of a hot streak. Hard grounder to short, gets through. Lolo Sanchez dough for that one, and Florida State is going to take the lead. And all the way over to third is Sydney Sherrill. The Seminoles now with a 5-4 advantage here in the top of sixth. And it looks like another misplay by the Panthers allows Florida State to move up a base. That ball was hit very hard, absolutely a sure double into left center. But as Levesque looked to pick up the ball, she dropped it a little bit, allowing uh, Mason to take the extra bag. As you see right there, she drops it, and then she drops it again on the throw. Allowed Mason to move up. Yeah, not only allows Mason to get all the way home, but allows Sydney Sherrill to get over to third. And what a ball game Sydney Sherrill has had. And a huge hit there to break open this game, give Florida State the lead 5-4 in the top of the sixth. But if you ask Coach Hermanic about that, I, I, I guarantee what she says is the one-out walk with nobody on base, right? So, so if that runner is not on base with a walk, that double, um, and then possible misplay into a three-bagger uh, doesn't score a run. So, you know, it's one of those walks that is, that is getting Pitt in trouble, um, and when you tag-team that with a misplay defensively, that's when things start to snowball on you. Harding fouls that one off. Kaylee Harding, one for three so far today with a single in the third. That scored a run. Kaylee Harding would love some redemption at the plate here after a couple miscues out in right field. Runner on third is Sydney Sherrill. Kaylee Harding would love to bring her home. Fouls that one back on the 2-1 pitch. Now, if this game has taught us anything, it's that this is far from over. Just a one-run deficit. Of course, the Panthers want to get out of this inning as soon as they can. But don't forget, they were down 4-0 earlier. Came back to tie the score, and Brittany Knight's going to get Kaylee Harding there for the strikeout, her fifth of this game. Yeah, it looks like a changeup in the dirt and catches Harding out front. As, ooh, I don't know. She's called out, but um, either way, really good pitch to get the strikeout. And that's the ideal out for the Panthers, especially with Cheryl on third base, not allowing a ball to be put in play there and giving, of course, Cheryl the opportunity to run, but holding her at third base instead. And now two outs. And it's Dion Riggs at the plate for the Seminoles. Pitch low and away in the dirt. 2-0 count. Dion Riggs, freshman outfielder from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Take that for ball three. And out to the circle is Walker Barbie going to have a chat with Brittany Knight. And as you see, Brittany Knight up to 129 pitches in this ball game, really working hard for the Panthers here in the top of the sixth. Yeah, and what I'm, I'm sure 
Walker Barbie wants to talk with Brittany Knight about is although a base is open and a walk here is not the worst thing in the world, nobody gets moved up, but you prefer to pitch here as opposed to landers on deck. Uh, you know, you have a freshman in rigs at the plate. She's uh, hit the ground ball back to Brittany, her last at bat. Uh, I, I think this is the, the hitter that you want to attack as opposed to getting to the more senior uh, landers. There's a little bit more power in her bat. So Nine will get the strike looking there. And there's Riggs tonight, 0 for 1 with a ground out. 304 average on the season. Off speed pitch, good for strike two. Knight working her way back. Mm, breaks off an excellent changeup. Absolutely freezes Riggs. 3 1. Now at 3 2, does she go back to it? Does she come hard and maybe get Riggs a, a little bit late? It's, it's going to be interesting to see. 3 2 pitch, two outs. And gets her swinging. Brittany Knight with her sixth strikeout of the game. Brittany Knight goes hard, fastball in, following that changeup. A really good pitch, stranding that runner in third. The Panthers up to bat. Panthers were hitless through three innings tonight, but in the fourth, that all changed. A couple of home runs from Kayla Lane and Walker Barbie, and the Panthers evened this game to tie it up at four. Kat Sandercock ended her evening and then stayed tied for an inning before in the top of the sixth, Florida State scoring Elizabeth Mason and taking the lead back at 5-4. Bottom of the sixth now, Danielle Watson still in the circle for the Knolls, and leading off for the Panthers is their cleanup hitter, Sarah Siemens. Yeah, if you're a Florida State fan, you have to be really excited, right? You take a little bit of a punch on the chin with the four-run inning here in the fourth, but you come back and get ahead here in the sixth. And the Panthers will take that to start the inning, but for a moment looked like Kaylee Harding was trying to get Siemens at first. Siemens hit that ball so hard into right field that it looked like Harding had a chance to throw that to Mason and possibly gun her down at first, but nonetheless, Siemens with the first pitch swing to get on first base to start the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, Harding attempted to go the old 9-3 put out. You, you, don't, you don't see that very often for those of you keeping score at home. But Siemens able to beat it out. Rex showing a bunt there on the first pitch, but will end up taking it for ball one. Jody Hermanic have to be thinking here. Levesque 0 for 2 tonight. She's one of the stronger hitters on this team. Hermanic has to be thinking she's due for one here in a big moment. We'll foul that one back. 1-1 one, one count now with Siemens on first. I like the thought there. A little bit of short gain to put some pressure on that Florida State defense. Uh, you know, in a 1-0 in count. I think she probably takes it off here and has Levesque swing away now that the infield comes a little bit in, maybe anticipating bunt, open up some holes in the defense. Levesque also potentially with her last chance here to extend her current hit streak to six games, currently sitting at five. But 0 for 2 so far tonight, and depending on how these next couple innings go, could end up being the final at-bat of the night for Levesque. 2-1 pitch. Levesque swings at the high one. And there's that rise that we talked about. Great location right up at the shoulders. Gets Levesque to swing through. 2-2 Two -two count. I bet she comes right back to it. Beck fouls it back to stay alive. Beck has started every game of the season for the Panthers. And staying patient there and holding off on the high ball there, making it a full count. Yeah, 
And Lavec used to pressure moments against Florida State as back in 2018, she had an RBI single in a 0-0 game against this Florida State team to put Pitt ahead. And Florida State ended up winning the game and the ACC championship that year. And the national championship. Then. And the national <laughs> championship, yeah. Quite, quite the year for Florida State. And again, Seminoles will be in contention for an ACC title, a national title, everything this year. But the Panthers have them on the ropes here in game one of this series. Got a meeting in the circle, a meeting in the dugout. Jody Hermanic going to talk to her staff. Everyone being careful. Close game here, 5-4, bottom of the sixth. Full count, this is a big pitch. Everyone wants to get it right. Here it comes from Watson. Levesque pops it up to shallow right. Harding going to make that catch. And so Siemens will stay at first. And that's the first out of the inning. Has to feel good for Kaylee Harding to secure that easy one. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you ask her, certainly not a sigh of relief. She's like, hey, I better make that play. <laughs> or else this glove might not be coming back to, uh, to Tallahassee. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, like you were saying earlier about Cheryl in the home run ball, you know, sometimes it just feels good to get back on track and remind yourself, hey, I, I got this, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes we put these these incredible athletes uh, on this pedestal. Of they, they can't do anything wrong. And uh, even as one of those athletes, you feel like you can need and should make every single play. But guess what? We're all human, right? I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to drop balls. You're going to strike out. It's how you come back from that, right? Not only in that game, but that season and that career that defines the people that have success and maybe the people that don't have as much. And Lonnie Alameda talked to us a lot about trust and how much she trusts this team. You know, some coaches out there might make a change, might make a defensive adjustment after two drops in right field from Harding, but she's confident in this team, confident, of course, in what Harding can do. Spoke extremely highly of Kaylee Harding, just a freshman who has had a fantastic year for Florida State in her first season. Yeah, and, and, and talking to Coach Alamina, he said, if I don't trust my, my ladies, then, then what am I doing as a coach? What, do, what am I doing as an educator if I can't trust them to do the right thing when I'm not around? Or if I can't trust them to do the right thing uh, when, when they're with each other? So, uh, you know, she trusts her girls, she trusts her ladies, and, you know, they, they've paid her back time and time again. So we walk there to Walker Barbie, and she will be subbed down for pinch runner Jada Crittenden. Making it first and second, and we'll bring up Lolo Sanchez. Matt, you know, talking about that, that trust with head coach Lonnie Alameda, another thing she mentioned is that she gave the team a couple days to head to the beach and, and rest recently after obviously a, a long and, and grueling season in Florida State has been fantastic this year and said, well, hey, if, if you don't trust your team enough to take a couple days off, come back and return to that same form that they were in, then that might be an issue. You know, you got to have that trust with your players and what they can do, especially allowing them to have some rest. Yeah, what, what people need to realize is that the college, especially the spring college seasons, it's not just the amount of games that you're playing. These ladies and, and, and men on the, on the baseball side and lacrosse and, and, and all the other spring sports, and you're practicing as soon as you get on campus in the fall, and you're really not stopping all the way until uh, you know, the, the, school, the school season is over, possibly into the start of, of the summer. So this is the type of time of year that she likes to give her girls uh, some time to, as you said, go to the beach. And we trust her. So we look at Danielle Watson, an inning and two-thirds in here. 
has allowed one hit, came in at the bottom of the fourth to save the Seminoles from a huge offensive inning for Pitt. Has performed well with three strikeouts since her entrance. Sanchez fouls off a bunt attempt there. And man, again, we've seen a lot of mound visits, circle visits, dugout meetings, all kinds of stuff. These teams, especially a few days before the ACC tournament, every pitch matters. Yeah, I think a couple things, right? You want to make sure you get it right, but you also want to make sure that you've seen some unforced and forced errors on this field. And as a coach or as a teammate, you want to do everything in your power to limit that. 1-1 one, one for Sanchez, swings at the high pitch there for a 1-2 count now. Really good rise. Lolo's got to do a, a, a job here of trying to identify that pitch and laying off it if it's going to come up above her shoulders. right? If she sees it down, she can get a good piece of it uh, like she did last time for the extra base hit. But she has to recognize that that's how she's been beaten so far today. 1-2, same spot. Lolo swings at it again. And that will be out number two, bringing up Bailey Drapola. And if you remember, Drapola had a big hit her last time up on the, with, the, with the pinch hit. So another big at bat for, uh, for her coming off the bench. So second strikeout swinging of the day for Lolo Sanchez. But as you said, Drapola came up big in her last AB for the Panthers. Hoping to do it again here with two runners on in the bottom of the sixth. And Drapola there laying off that rise. Um, she goes back to it to try to get the chase early in the in the count. And, and Watts is not able to get the swing and miss on the first pitch. Works Drapola inside that time for ball two. In the on-deck circle for the Panthers is Hannah Beach. Beach with two strikeouts today. 2-0 pitch. High for ball three. Chipotle lays off another rise, getting to the 3-0 count. You know, she's really seeing the ball well uh, off of Watson. Watson's got to come all the way back. She had, the last thing she wants is the base is loaded where a walk forces in a run. That one right down the heart of the plate there. For strike number one, Drapola, the sophomore for the Panthers, who transferred in from Akron, actually led Akron in batting average last season, but so far this year for the Panthers, this just her 18th at bat of the year. Of course, came up big in her last at bat, but this time looks at two consecutive strikes. And Watson has worked her way back to a full count. Huge pitch coming here, two outs, two on for the Panthers. And high pop up there over to short, should be easy for Muffley, and it is. Seminoles get their way out of the inning, they hold on to that one run lead. We've got one inning to play at Vardabedian Field. ACC Softball Championship begins Wednesday afternoon, and this year it's at Ulmer Stadium on the campus of Louisville. First round coverage starts at 1 Eastern right here on the network, the ESPN app. And what a production by our fantastic crew here tonight, and look forward to coverage the rest of the weekend and into the conference tournament as we look at the ACC softball standings, North Carolina falling to Louisville tonight. So the Cardinals take game one of that series and the Panthers still battling against Florida State and hanging on to the 10 spot at least through the rest of the evening. Yeah, if you're a Panthers fan, that, that's, that's what you need to see, right? You need to see North Carolina fall tonight. Um, but you still have an opportunity to take, take care of business for yourself. That allows you, if you get the win today, um, to be breathing a lot easier going into tomorrow's doubleheader. And again, one of the interesting aspects of the rest of this weekend as we track the scores and track the standings is that Pitt's doubleheader as of now is scheduled for tomorrow. North Carolina's doubleheader against Louisville is scheduled for Sunday. So it'll be interesting to see. Always factors in when 
you know a certain team's results. And so the Panthers will head into Sunday likely having three games of their series done while the Tar Heels will likely only be two games in to their series with the Cardinals. And so to start off this seventh inning, Brittany Knight will allow Landers to first base as it hits, looked like just over the top of her knee there. Yeah, tried to come in with a bit of a curveball breaking in to Landers and a little bit too much. As you see there at 135 pitches, maybe laboring a little bit, um, causing the leadoff hitter to get on base. So it brings up Anna Shellnut. Have to keep an eye on that pitch count for Brittany Knight. Up to 136 now here in the seventh. And she's done a good job, of course, of keeping the Panthers in this thing all night long. Yeah, and what pitch count does, it, it, it doesn't really affect velocity too much going forward. It doesn't affect, you know, the speed of your pitches coming in. What typically you see at, at high pitch counts is a little bit of the sharpness in some of your off speed uh, is not there. You know, you're out of the zone a little bit more than you would have been uh, when you're fresh. Uh, those are kind of the things you want to start watching. I mean, one of those telltale signs might be a hit by pitch that we saw to Landers. Um, so it's one of those things that you know Coach Hermanic is looking at and, and keeping an eye on during this inning. Shall not swinging along the outside there. Jody Hermanic telling her. She Looks like another it. one of those cars, right. They keep flying out today. Didn't think the wind was too bad here at Vardabit in field tonight, but. It's poker, they're, they're folding their cars, <laughs> throwing them in there. <laughs> and an outside pitch gets Shellnut swinging for the third strike. And Brittany Knight now up to seven strikeouts on the evening. Yeah, great pitch. Gets Shellnut to chase outside twice to put her away. And that's one of those bounce back at bats that Coach Hermanic talks about. When something bad happens, hit by pitch, walk, something like that, hit. The next batter, if you can get that batter out, it limits that damage a little bit. And soft grounder by Flaherty, but looked like the runner interfered with Chandler Walter's ability to field that ball. It was about to be a routine out for Chandler Walter here as we take a look. Yeah, and I don't know if Walter did this on purpose, but a bit of a heady play. I'm not sure if she had an opportunity to get Landers at second if she fields that ball. She's probably going in first, and there's a runner in scoring position as a result. But when she runs into Landers or Landers runs into her, whichever way you're looking at it, uh, now that runner's no longer in scoring position. So a fortunate break there for Pitt. So it gives them the second out. Brings up Josie Muffley. Devin Flaherty on first. And that one bounced off Barbie and allows Flaherty to get to second. Devin Flaherty, 15 steals on the season entering tonight. Hasn't been caught stealing all year long. Low pitch there for ball two to Muffley. See there, 0 for 3 on the night. Fouls that one back for strike two. Muffley, another one of the Seminoles that has started every game of the season. Had a really good year last year despite the shortened season. Had 
333 batting average, led the team with three triples before the season came to an end. Now soft grounder to second, Walter throw over to Siemens. Good for the third out. 5-4 lead for Florida State. Panthers with one more chance coming up. Well, to start the bottom of the seventh for the Panthers. And a one-run deficit for Pittsburgh here, but they've got the top of the order coming up right after this. And an opportunity to be a huge upset to start this series against the ninth-ranked team in the country. Yeah, it'd be a great way to start if you're a Pitt Panther fan, if you're a Florida State fan. You know, you, you know, game one is huge for winning that ACC regular season championship. But you see there as, as Earl walks to lead off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The toughest three outs of the game to get are always the last three. And we're seeing it here. The Panthers will be pleased to start the inning like that. And Bree Horrell came in as a pinch hitter there for Hannah Beach. And now Hannah Beach will just re-enter and pinch run for Harrell. So Watson's done, and the Panthers still with time to come back. Well, Jody Hermanic told us that this Florida State team has three aces, and we're now seeing the third of three tonight. Kaylin Arnold into the contest for Florida State to try and close this thing out. The senior from Tennessee coming in for the Seminoles with nobody out and a runner on first here, bottom seven. Yeah, with Kaylee Arnold, we're going to see upper 60s velocity with a really heavy rise ball that has a little bit of arm side run action to it. You're going to see it up and into these right-handed hitters. Uh, you know, one of the things that you're going to hear with these three aces, a lot of rise balls, a lot of drop balls. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, it would have been the velocity is king, but that's not the way college softball is now. And quick heads up play there from Sidney Sherrill to get Walter at first, but the bunt does do its job in getting Hannah Beach over to second. So one out now, a runner in scoring position for the Panthers, and they've got Kayla Lane in the two spot at the play. Now let me remind you, she homered back in the fourth. Of course, if she were to do that again, this ball game would be over. But of course, new to the game, Kayla Arnold, she is fresh and ready to go, but a prime opportunity here for the Panthers. And when we asked Coach Hermanic about Kayla Lane, she said two things. High quality at bats, timely hits. What a time for her to come up for the Pitt Panthers. <laughs> Absolutely. Solo home run came in the fourth. Huge moment for the sophomore. 0 1 pitch coming, but it's going to just pop it up for an easy catch by Elizabeth Mason over at first, and the Panthers are down to their final out. And that was that pitch with a little bit of arm side run. Uh, a really, really, really good pitch to get the second out of the inning. And, and one thing that uh, Florida State coaching staff talked about this, these three aces, and they all want to be the lady. They all want to be the one with the ball in their hand with the game on the line. Arnold right now has the opportunity, and she's looking to seize it. Cammie Thompson with a deep drive to center field. And Pittsburgh has taken down the number nine team in the country. Cammie Thompson says, get off me ball. That ball is way out of here to center. And the Panthers take it 6-5. A magical night at Vardavidian Field, capped by a Cami Compson crusher to center. What a ball game for Pitt. You, you overcome some adversity on the defensive side. You get a great 
uh, game pitch by Brittany Knight battling through adversity her whole game with multiple walks and coming back and offensively leaving the yard on multiple occasions against if not the toughest pitching staff in the country. Uh, if you're a Pitt Panther fan, you, you have to be proud of these ladies. Wow. Joni Hermanic gave us five words to sum up Cammie Compson's play. Go big or go home. Panthers get the victory. So for Matt Ionazzo and our fantastic crew, I'm Jason Earl saying so long from Pittsburgh where the final score is Pitt six and Florida State five. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on the ACC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.